Clive Vortec, uh, thank you so much for joining us today for this session. Uh, before we discuss your experiences with running a zero waste restaurant, could you just give us an overview of, of your career and, and the journey that you've been on? Um, yeah, so I'm working as a chef for like a past, uh, past decade or so. And then I also opened my own restaurant that was like a zero waste and plant-based restaurant after which I have wrote a book about zero waste techniques in the kitchen. And now I work as a zero waste consultant and a plant-based chef. Okay. And in terms of your early career, where, where did you start and, and, and where did you work? Because I know you, you've worked globally. My very first uh, experience was in Greece. In a, in, a, in a large hotel resort. That's where I started my career as a, as a commis chef. That was, a, that was like 14 years ago, I, I guess so. Yeah, a, a lot has changed ever since. <laughs> and, and what inspired you to, to go on this journey of discovery and, and, and think about food waste and, and, and do what you've done? Um, I will reference your book, which I have a copy of here a, a lot during, during this call. Um, there's some amazing content in, in there. There's some great quotes. It is a compelling read. And, and as you rightly say, it's, it's written by a chef for chefs. So mm. in terms of, of your journey and, and, the, and the journey that you've been on, when did that first start for you? When did you just take a step back and think, hold on a minute, this doesn't feel right to me? It, you know, like going through so many kitchens and that there came a point when I realized that I just, it, there's something switched my look at the ingredients, you know, like so many of the things went into the waste every day. It may be just like picking up that bin at the end of the night with all the food waste. It just makes you think like, hold on, like we are buying food. We are selling food. It's the main product that we are selling. And why is there like a 50 kilo of it right in my hands right now? You know, like there is, there is so many, and, and that was the case in probably like in every kitchen uh, that, that I can recall I was working at. So I was maybe that, that started like kind of a subconscious shift for me that I wasn't, I wasn't like going right in, okay, now I've got to reduce food waste or something. It started like, you know, like step by step. So I could see something that like, hmm, maybe let's look at it. Does it really has to go to the bin? Can we do something? Can we do something about that? So like, step by step i started to become more aware of the ingredients not only that i'm working with but more so the parts that i'm discarding or the parts that are ending up in a bin at the end of the night and then at one point i ended up working in a restaurant where uh, the, that wasn't even intentional there was a chef who was using uh who was preferring parsley stems over the parsley leaves because they carry a slightly different flavor he was choosing uh salad stalks instead of its leaves we've been using fish skin more so highlighted on a plate than the fish meat itself and it really just proved the fact for me like okay like no, that's not only my view obviously now there is more to that there is more people to that and i was like so if that chef if we can do that if we can run into the large scale in the kitchen then sure we can do something about that and then ever since that that's really, really clicked for me like food waste like why do we have it in a hospitality when we are working with the food and then we are wasting the food like it doesn't make any sense and that that is really like where it like started for me like i think ever since uh, i just couldn't let my mind go off the food waste topic and i i just lost my desire in working in a kitchens where like kind of no one cared or no one knew i really went into that the food waste journey at that point I mean, absolutely brilliant. I guess there comes a point in time uh, where when something drops, something lands, and, and I guess that was the point in time for you where food waste started to feel like a more compelling problem mm. than possibly it was before that. So in terms of your approach to reducing food waste in the professional kitchen, where do you start and what are the basic principles for any chef leading the kitchen or any chef working in the kitchen you know what what are those basics that they need to to do recognize and, and and engage with their own staff with the first thing that um most of the people ask me is that okay like we have this full waste what we can do about that 
and they are looking for kind of advice. I give them some advice and they follow me, then do it. And then they realize like, but yeah, okay, like that's cool, but it doesn't really reduce my food waste. Now the problem is that the food waste solution or the reducing or the prevention, it must be included. It must be the standard procedure. You cannot start thinking about reducing the food waste at a point when there is some part of the waste on your chopping board and then thinking about it, what I'm gonna do with it. It must be designed into your system. And this is the most important step. This is a single, the only single step I would recommend to everyone. You design the food waste out of your system. You create a menu that has considered all parts of every single ingredient that come into your kitchen. And that way you won't end up in a situation when you're gonna be all of a sudden thinking like, oh, hold on, but I have like 10 kilo of like trimmings here. Because if you are in that situation, that you already know that there is some problem in that system. It's implementing, it's, it's standardizing the food, uh, the zero waste cooking. That is the most important step, standardizing the whole thing. So you reference in your book uh, about smart menu. So is that what you're talking about here? So yeah, you should formulate your thinking when you're designing your, your dishes, your menu. Food waste should be part of the process. It, it comes to that. So when you are writing new dishes, when you are writing new menu, you know what components you're thinking about, what are the ingredients going to be, how you're going to play them. You most likely even test the dish a few times. And then that is, the, that is the most important part of the process when you're supposed to look at everything that ended up in a bin and then ask the big why. Why is it there? Because if you don't do it then, right there, you're really going to be struggling to reduce that later on. Once you have created a very wasteful menu that didn't consider the food waste at its core, it's going to be really hard slash impossible to reduce it later on because then it's going to be taking away your time. It's going to be an extra work. You won't know what to do with it. You will have to think about it kind of on the spot. And that just doesn't work in an environment as a professional kitchen, which is like high speed, like, you know, there is like so much going on in the day. You can't just be so spontaneous about that. Yeah, so I think the important thing is here is this needs to be part of, of your thought process when you're designing yeah. your dishes and your menu. You know, every, every single piece of, of, a, of a carrot, a parsnip, watermelon, whatever it may be, treat that uh, as, as much as you treat a piece of meat. And, and I love the, the quote about, is it the, the black truff, truffle mindset? No. Um, that resonated with me. I just thought that was a really simple but a powerful message. I don't know if you want to expand on, on what that actually means. Yeah, the, the, the black truffle mindset, that, that's something I, uh, I came up with when I, it really struck me. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a long time ago. But I was working with black truffles in the kitchen. And then that, that was when I was an employee of the, of the restaurant. And then there being chefs like being handling the truffles so carefully, like every little crumb from the plate went back into the jar. There was nothing extra, not a milligram of it went to the waste. It was perfectly stored, perfectly handled, and every tiny bit of it was used to the maximum. And we've been buying very expensive ingredients in that restaurant and a lot of organic stuff. And then we peeled 20 kilo of organic parsnips and threw all the pills away. <laughs> I was like, we just, we just threw away more money than you would throw away a few crumbles of the black truffle that you were so careful with. So that is, you know, the, what I'm saying with a black truffle mindset is that you already have the zero waste mindset. You just need to apply it more widely. You know how to treat the black, trunk, the black truffle so it lasts the longest and that you maximize every tiniest piece of it. You just have to apply that across the different vegetables too. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think mind, mindset's the key one here. And, and I love this quote that I've taken out of the book. The most dangerous phrase in our language is we've always done it this way. I think we've all been guilty of, of, of saying that or doing that. And, At and some point, that. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But this resonates again a lot more when you're talking about food waste, you know, both for, for profit, your business, but also for the planet. Um, and that really stuck with me, that particular quote, amongst many that I've got written down here. Um, but I think it's the mindset change. And, and, and I, 
you know, again, you mentioned this throughout the book, you need to change the way you think about this, um, about your values. So I don't know if you can add a bit more sort of to that, if you don't mind. It, I mean, you can come up with the best of the system. You can have, you can work with anyone you want. You can have technology, you can have whatever. But if you don't think that the food should not be in a bin, then it's only going to help you so much. Because everything, well, that everything in life, not only the food, comes down to what you think about that. So what do you actually think about those carrot peels? Beef bones, not only carrot peels, anything, any part that is, stand, that is normally thrown out. What do you think about it? Why do you think that the potato peels are something less than the potato itself? I mean... The nature didn't create it that waste. You created that waste. You peel the potato. You don't have to peel it. You know, it's, part, it's naturally part of the potato. We peel it. We call it a waste. And then we have a problem because of that. Well, they just don't do that. It really comes down to like what you think about that. Because, I mean, no one can force this onto you. It's, I can be talking to you for a whole year and you're not going to change it if you don't want it. You, you, have to, you have to be sure about that, that you want it, and that you believe in something like that. Because if you think that it's okay what we've been doing for the past 20 or 50 years, then I mean, then that's where, you know, like that, there is no moving on from that. And I think if you're running a business or you're running a kitchen, ultimately you're, you're, you're running it because you need to make money and pay salaries. So it's important that you think that way, that you change your mindset you start adapting the way you work with every single ingredient within the kitchen. Um, if you don't mind me saying so, you do have quite a radical approach. And I love the fact, that I think, in the restaurant that you opened in Cambodia, you never had no. a, a waste or food bin in there. Is that correct? No, that started without a bin in the kitchen. How did you cope with that? I mean, that, that is radical, but, but I understand it. That, that, gives people the opportunity not just to throw stuff away for the sake of it. But how did you cope with that? You know, like the, the bin is kind of, uh, it's always kind of like a backup. It's like that friend, you know, that is dead. If I have something, I put it in there. So it's fine. I just put it in a bin, right? Just throw it out and whatever. Just go with your work. Well, well, what happens when the bin is not there? I mean, where you put it, what you do with it? I cope with that because I have designed that system. But yeah. my staff, my staff had they they there was some learning curve let's say that way at the <laughs> beginning yeah. <laughs> until they like they ended up with something and like oh chef but what do we do with this and i'm like okay like look like here is the other ingredients and the process that we can use as ingredients so go ahead and do that and then there is nothing going into the waste because well there is no waste bin. i yeah. did eventually had like a smaller uh, composting uh, bin in my garden sure. for like or like the unedible parts, you know, like the mango skins and pineapple tops and all the stuff like that. But everything that was edible, it at some point it was circled back into the menu. Either it was on the dinner menu or it was on the lunch menu. It it got circled back at some point. And I'm I'm not saying that now like, you should like take out the beans from the kitchen and like never bring that back. I know that system is not viable in every environment to be absolutely zero because that zero basically doesn't exist. Like it's never a zero. There's always sure. like 5% or like a very low amount. But it, it really is something that, you know, like maybe try it for a day. If you yeah. can try it for a day and see what happens, see how your mind basically expands because yeah. you are forced to basically, you know, like the bin is not there. Okay, so now I have to do something else with it. Sure. Now I'm going to ask questions like, is it edible? Yeah. Well, if it is, then you already know it belongs to the plate. Yeah. Then, then it goes out. If it's not edible, then okay, don't play with it. Just okay, yeah. then gotta go to the compost. But it really is something that it helps. Sure. Yeah. And I guess it's a safety net. Um, and if you take the safety net away, people will start. You will to, be more to, careful. To, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. It forces, it forces your hand in a kitchen. Um, but, but it may be a step too far for some, but, but I love the approach and I, I love the way you're thinking about that. Um, I mean, again, another quote, food waste is a human problem. Humans created it and only humans can eliminate it. And, and again, for me, that, that's, that's a powerful statement. Um, and if you take that in its entirety and you think about that, it, it's absolutely true. So 
I think we as as people within the food industry as chefs can certainly make make a difference. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. And I guess for most of the chefs around the world, it's challenging at the moment with lack of staff and, and then mm. suddenly that they've got to think about other things like sustainability and food waste. So I don't know what else you could offer in terms of support and advice along that journey. Zero waste is easy if you design it from day one. I mean, it really makes your life easier. Even if you are understaffed, you don't have resources, you don't have equipment, you don't have finances. Zero waste is the ultimate system for every kitchen. There is, it's just the superior. That the basically nothing, no other system is so effective as a zero waste system. Because if you have a zero waste system set up, well, that means that your menu is designed in a smart way, right? So there is like no excessive waste. No excessive waste means that there is no excessive work. So now we are using it all. Since you are using it all, everything that you have bought, that means that you are quintessentially, you are raising your profits too, because now sure. you're not wasting so much. And since you have already spent a good amount of thinking about your smart menu and designing everything into it, that means that now your workday is really, really straightforward. Maybe you don't even need that many stuff for a mise en place as you had before, because it's very easy to prepare the ingredients now because you know exactly how and what. And with that coming in, you, you're unlikely to have too many, uh, too many dishes on your menu. So you're gonna cut back slightly because since now you are buying one ingredient and have using five different parts of it, now you don't need too many ingredients. So it's easier for, easier for the inventory. Now you are better with the storage. Now we are way more efficient. So now you can design your dishes way better because you are maximizing everything. So in the end, it is a, it, it is a process. It takes more time in thinking and planning, but it's very rewarding in the end because maybe a few months later, you're gonna realize, oh, like that is so easy because the process has been automatized. So I guess there's, there's a leap of faith, but it, it's ultimately it's about planning, isn't it? And, and that's nothing new yeah. for a chef, you know? Yeah. Good chef. Everything plan, comes plan, after plan. the planning. Absolutely. And, and it shouldn't be any different when, when you're considering food waste or how you reduce that. Um, one other thing I picked out from the book is you, you've got a very strong opinion. Actually, maybe it's, did I read it in the book or saw it online somewhere? But it's, it's data versus versus action. Um, and again, I love this. You don't need even more information. You need transformation. Um, so could you just, again, sort of expand a bit on, on that particular quote? Like, yeah. Right now, with the age of the internet and the information being available 24-7, literally everywhere, literally in your pocket, you become subconsciously obsessed with consuming data and information. The, you know, so you can consume as much information as you want. There is endless amount of it in the world. It's not going to take you anywhere. Because if you're not going to do any, if you're not going to act on it, it's not going to take you anywhere. The only information, and especially regarding food waste, that you need is how much you have in your kitchen. It doesn't matter to you how much is there in the world. It's not going to change anything. How much you have every day in your kitchen, that is the only information that you need. And then you, this is something that you can act upon. You can't act upon the fact that there is, I don't know how many millions of tons of food waste in the world. I mean, what are you going to do? You start in your kitchen because, you know, I have 30 kilograms of waste every day. Now, let's cut it down to 25 next week. Let's cut it down to 20 next month. This is what you can do. No data, no information, no unnecessary stuff, but doing something right in the moment, right now. Yeah, I, I guess we can all, all hide behind the data, can't we? I mean, that's an easy game to play. But at some point, you, 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 need to, you need to take action, you need to make a difference. And, and that means you as an individual, particularly if you're leading a kitchen team, is, is to start making plans to do that. Um, also, you mentioned about incentivizing your staff, sort of back of house and front of house. Again, how, how did you do that previously? How would you encourage Know, chefs now to do that with their staff to get them on board to get them thinking about ways of, of reducing food waste 
they, they must have a strong support system. Like, there's got to be, uh, if you're a large restaurant, then a strong net of leadership. But if you're a small restaurant, then you've got to have the, the head chef, the general manager or someone who is in charge, who is leading it, who the staff that knows that they can turn to them. This is, it's, it, this is really important because your staff, like your chef de party and your coffee chef will never be as motivated as your executive chef is, for example, and shouldn't. Like, it's on a level rank. So he, they, even the front of house and back of house, need someone to look up to, that they can turn to. Chef, I don't know how to do this. Help me with this. you got to be available. It's really, the, the leadership is very important in the, in the world food waste reduction. And basically, in any change making, the leadership is important. How to get everyone on board with that? Because no one, maybe not everyone, will be self incentive to do the change for you because essentially this is a business change more than any other because the effect, the full effect of your, you making a change is eventually creating more profit and that is for the business. So it always must be a positive motivation for everyone. Definitely not threatening. I've seen that before, threatening the staff that if you're going to waste that, then this and this happens. It just doesn't work. There's got to be a positive motivation and there's got to be a strong leadership in that process. And I guess it's about getting those, those other chefs within your team just to think a bit more, with, be a bit more creative about food that potentially would end up in the bin, think mm. outside the box and, and maybe incentivise them with the creativity of being a chef, um, which shouldn't end with, you know, peelings going in the bin, should it? It should be everything's everything's up for crabs quite frankly um create that open conversation in the kitchen you know it's like be, be more approachable so even the the coffee chef can come to you like oh chef but i've seen this so maybe can we try this and just like make standardize that too like you know be very open about that and if everyone can contribute to that system that it's gonna make your makes your life eventually so much easier and a knock-on effect is the consumer people coming into your restaurant should see this as well should be made aware of this that this this is what you're doing as, as a restaurant you're, you're taking ownership of it you're taking responsibility for that i mean that's quite good to share with consumers as well isn't it it, it will be reflected at some point because there is no way of hiding it i mean if you have, if you put so much effort into creating that system in your dishes i mean you're not gonna go silent about that right you don't have to scream about how zero waste you are but you're gonna talk about it and you will want your your guests to know that, and even even uh, your your waiters will know what is happening in the kitchen. So they will eventually tell that, like, okay, but we did that slightly differently because now we have a different approach. And guests in these years, especially when the sustainability is such a big topic, they really appreciate that. It is really being appreciated if the business takes takes some kind of accountability and responsibility for that was happening. So it's a win-win-win situation. So what was the, always. Sorry, so what was the response like in, in Cambodia when, when you had your restaurant there with, with consumers, with your customers? I, I advertised myself as a zero-waste restaurant. So that was yeah. very clear from the beginning. That was a zero-waste restaurant. There are lots of people came out of curiosity, basically, to see, okay, like, what does that mean? What is it? But they, they've been very surprised when they, when they didn't see nothing, nothing different on that plate. I mean, it was just a normal plate of food. I didn't build that plate from a waste, but it, it, but it was present on that, in that plate. You know, I, I can't recall, and I'm very grateful for that, I can't recall a single negative comment in the restaurant uh, about anything because every cooking, every, every style, every cuisine, everything is focused on the flavor first yeah, and foremost. Of course, yeah. So when the you know, it's cooking, you can't compromise the flavor. In fact, opposite, you are trying to maximize the flavor by yeah. using all parts of every ingredient. So it must be more delicious. Uh, it must be delicious. You can't cook food that's not delicious. Absolutely. So as long as the food is delicious and looking good, I mean, they don't care, zero waste or not. I mean, yeah. I love the food, so I'm going to come. <laughs> but you can make it zero waste yeah. in, in the kitchen, in the system, you yeah. know. It, it really is a win-win situation. Of course. Um, you talk about 
the 50-50 principle as well. So I don't know if you could just enlighten us with, with what that is exactly. Yeah, that is like a kind of, uh, say like a small cheat sheet for the chefs on like how to build the dishes. That is a, that is a, that is a way of managing ingredients in every dish and then on every menu where you use roughly 50% of fresh daily prepared ingredients, such as, I don't know, herbs, fillets of fish, um, boiled vegetables and stuff like that that must be prepared on the day. And the other 50% is the kind of a long shelf life ingredients, ferment, pickles, dehydrated stuff, batch made items, things that can be frozen, such as stocks, et cetera, demi-glass. So if you, if you try to build your every dish roughly in the same ratio of 50% daily fresh prepared, 50% large batch made or, uh, or preserved, you're going to end up with a whole menu that is roughly 50-50. Sure. You just reduced the amount of the daily mise en place that you need to do because there is so many things that can be made in batch that can be preserved. And not only that, but even it will force your creativity on yeah. because then you're going to be using different uh, variety of things on one dish and that is just going to help you in your daily work. And that is, of course, since you are using preserved items that are, have longer shelf life, that helps your food waste to reduce again because zero waste cooking is not only about eating carrot peels and potato peels and I don't know what trimmings and stuff. It's about designing out the waste of the system. So extending the shelf life, pickling, preserving, fermenting, freezing, and everything that you can do. And it's a, it's a really, really functional system that you can, you can achieve where now you basically, you only have to do half of the mission pass that you were doing before pretty much. Sure, and, and I guess it's it's a very simple but a very effective way of, of approaching your your dish and menu development. And, and again, with with you know the, the fermenting, the preserving, the pickling, all of that great stuff. That's mm. obviously an area where you can spend a bit of time being creative with with food waste. I, I, I really get that. Um, just looking down the many lists of quotes and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, you you mentioned never compromise on safety and hygiene in the name of zero waste cooking. So. I think that that's obviously, you know, something that, that most people will, will understand and get. Um, the ultimate food waste solution is food waste prevention, measure your food waste. I think that's that's probably where you start, isn't it, in terms of understanding the problem? Prevention is everything. I mean, you know, it, uh, prevention goes to, the, to, everyone would say that, to all areas of your life. But that, that is, is really true for everything. Because if you prevent your problems, then you don't have to deal with the problems because you, you're not going to have them, right? Yeah. So prevention is, is, the, is the only solution to food waste. Anything else is can help, but it's not a solution. Sure. Um, and you made a bold statement, aim for 100% food waste reduction. Um, maybe it's not bold. That's, that's quite clever, actually. Because if you aim for anything less, then... And again, you talk about the way your mind works, but I'd be interested to, to hear your, your opinion, your views on that particular one. Uh, yeah, aim for 100%, but know that you won't achieve the 100%, most likely. You will achieve 90, 95, 97, whatever percent, but not 100. The, the point I made in a book is that you can clearly imagine in your mind, with, even with your closed eyes, how much 100% look like. That 100% is 10, if I put 10 apples on the table, the 100% of the apples is all 10. If I take them away, there is nothing left. You know exactly how it looks. But if I take away two, which is 20% reduction, I mean, you look like a table, well, oh, yeah, there's some apples. But is that eight or 10? Can you tell right away? I mean, you can't really. It's just your, how your mind works. You know, if yeah. you set your mind on 100%, 100% is all. So you know that if there, if there is still a little bit, you know that you are not at 100%. But if your goal is to reduce your food waste by 20%, and I mean, unless you do rigorous daily measuring, how are you going to know? Yeah. Like I have 10 kilo of waste now in a bin, like, is it 20, is it 25, is it 30? Yeah, again, very simple, but very effective way of, of, of approaching this particular subject. Um, I think for me, you know, I've read the book, back to front on a number of number of occasions um, and you've got some great ideas in there in terms of how you repurpose 
what would normally be considered food waste that would go in a bin? Have you got maybe two or three of your sort of favourite ways of, of repurposing sort of traditional, what we'd call traditional food waste items? One of our all-time favourite ingredients is a carrot because it's, a, it's just one single ingredient. It has so many different parts and so many different flavour profiles. On carrot tops, I say there's more carrot than the carrot itself. Because they are, they are, they taste herby and they taste carroty at the same time, and they are very zesty. So using carrot carrot tops over over the parsley or in a combination with other stuff, where you use carrot, where you want to maximize the carrot flavor, it's 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 perfect. The, my other favorite part is that also uh, many people reference reference to me that the carrot peels they are surprised how they taste. Uh, no, sorry, potato peels. How the potato peels taste more potatoy than the potato itself, and that's because most of the vegetables, the skin contains more nutrition and more flavor than the core of the vegetable itself. So roasted potato peels over roasted potato at any point of the day for me, they, there is just so much more flavor in that. Yeah. Another one is cauliflower. These are my, like my three favorite ingredients: potato, carrot, and cauliflower. Cauliflower has its leaves that are automatically cut off in the bang bin. That's right away 30% of the cost in a bin before you even start working with a cauliflower. So uh, do that with a 10 kilo of, uh, of cauliflowers. And there you have three kilo times whatever the price of the cauliflower is in a bin before you touch the cauliflower. Uh, while the cauliflower leaves taste, have a very cabbage -y, cabbage -y notes, I would say you can use them in a coleslaw, you can use them in a salad. You can trim them down because now you have the cauliflower core, you have the cauliflower stem, you have a cauliflower leaf. You see, there is so many parts of the ingredient that you can work with. Now apply your back of the mindset on that full cauliflower and you're going to have a very premium ingredient in your hands that you can maximize every part of it in your dish. Yeah, and I love the way you, you elevate sort of humble vegetables to, to being something absolutely stunning. Not, not that I've tried it, but I trust you as a chef because I know you're very good. But reading the book, and I think it was the butternut squash. Is it smoked butternut squash? Is that correct? Is that? Yeah, that was one of the most popular dishes in Cambodia. Yeah, and, and again, when, when, I, when I, I read that, and I thought, wow, yeah, I, I, I can visualise that on, on, on a plate in a restaurant that, and being that really was an umami bomb yeah yeah so just just briefly talk about that particular one and, and how you got your thought process got to creating such a wonderful dish with quite a humble ingredient uh, I, will, I was serving a tasting menu a 10 course tasting menu in Cambodia I took it I took the standard approach of uh, creating kind of a storyline throughout the tasting menu so every every dish basically connects to the previous one and then connects to the to the one after that. So it's like eating the dishes, like, you know, it's like going to a story, basically. And I was looking at, I, I needed something, Mammy. I needed something. What, 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 what would usually be your strong meat course in the tasting menu? I needed something like that. There was something missing. So I was looking, how can I get these meaty, smoky, steaky flavors with all plant-based ingredients? So I took the umami stuff, I used miso, so I marinated the, the Cambodians have really, these really dense, heavy, kind of Cambodian style pumpkin that they have there. You've really worked for that. There's so much water. I marinated in a miso paste for two days. I rinsed it off. I roasted it in a roasted garlic oil. And then I roasted it on the pan before serving. And then I smoked it in a... I, I, smoked, it, I smoked it with a with an apple wood. And then it was... So then it was served right away with like a Cambodian red pepper and a stronger mustard sauce. It basically ticked all the boxes of having like a strong meat course yeah. without having the meat. So there was a lot of people coming in and being like, oh, if every meal was like that, then I don't even need to eat meat. <laughs> yeah, and, and it sounds sounds amazing. I know you're a big advocate, plant-based and vegan. Uh, maybe that's that's something for another time as well because I, I, mm. I know you, you're very passionate about that. And again, you've got some great examples of, of dishes that you created in, in the book. Um any closing comments for yourself, for, for chefs that will be listening to this? Anything else you, you want to share? Anything else you want them to take away? I think they've been out of the your kitchen for a day and see how much fun you're going to have. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love to know. It'd be great to get some, some quotes back from chefs to see, see how they got on. But 
I, I really love that. And I, and I think just, just for a day, um, or maybe when you're thinking about developing your next menu, think a bit harder about some of the humbling. When you're developing your next menu, then set up a special container only, only yeah. for the waste from that creation of that menu. Yeah. And that, that will be easy for you to go through and see exactly what's in there. Absolutely. That's brilliant. Well, listen, thank you for your time and for sharing you. your own experiences, your advice on reducing food waste in, in a professional kitchen. Good luck with all the, the future projects that you're in, involved with. Um, you know, I'd, I'd encourage chefs to follow you. Uh, I know you're on LinkedIn, but we'll have some resources from yourself. Yeah. I think we can share after, after this call. Um, chefs, when you're listening to this, please get yourself a copy of Wojtek's book. I'll put it up once more. It's a game changer. Um, like I said before, it's, it's written by a chef, Wojtek, for chefs. So uh, I'd encourage you to, to buy a copy of this. Wojtek, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank um, you so much. It's, it's something I know you're extremely passionate about. Uh, I'm passionate about it. Um, and let's hope more chefs get passionate about it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.